My name is JL Adams, and on this episode of Intoxicated, the Sip and Chat Show, the beautiful and outspoken Melissa Atwell, aka Melly Mel, shares her journey as an entrepreneur, a social media activist, the negative effect from the leakage of some nude photos on social media, and the launching of her very own NGO, Yana. You are not alone. I do a lot when it comes to domestic violence as well because I've been there as well. Okay. So all of that falls under Yana. These topics and more as we sit, sip, and chat with Melly Mel here on Intoxicated, the Sip and Chat Show. Hi, this is Melly Mel and you're tuning into Intoxicated. Remember to drink responsibly. So, welcome, 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 Ellie. Hi. Thanks for uh, being here again. You're Thanks actually, for having me again. You're actually um, <coughs> the first guest that uh, would have appeared on both seasons. Oh. So, yeah, this mm -hmm. is season two. You was actually on season So one. I must be special then. You're special, you're special. <laughs> so, you know, you know the rules. You know, it's it's, it's um, compulsory for us to um, take a shot at the beginning. So, what would you like to, to have um, that you haven't had before? You know what? I'm going to have a shot of the Campari. The Campari? Yeah, since they've been, you know, very, very good to me and they've been sponsoring <laughs> a lot of my events and stuff. Oh, um, so it's only fair that I start the show Edison, off with... Edison, Edison what? Edison, he's... Edison, Edison yes, Jeff Edison. Yeah. <laughs> good night, Jeff. Shout, Edison, if you... Shout out to Edison. Yeah. He's been, you know, very, very good in terms well, of sponsorship and, you know, coming on board with me on my many projects. So, well, you know, it's only fair that I start the show Definitely. with so, the Campari. Cheers to being the first guest to be featured on both uh, seasons. So, you know, the last time you was here, we actually learned about Melly Mel, the mom, Melly Mel, the media personnel, Melly Mel, the, the person that went to different pageantries and stuff like that. By the way, how was he 11 year old son and, and the four adopted kids that um, you have? <laughs> my five kids are Your great. Your five kids, yeah. <laughs> my five kids mm -hmm. are great. Uh, the big, the elders just finished writing your levels. She did really, really well, Anastasia Boyle. Congrats. Congrats. I know she's going to watch that. I'm so proud of you. Um, she got three distinctions and a B. What? So, yes. I hope she got one of those distinctions <laughs> in English. Yes. Definitely. She did. Definitely. So, what did you And her? English law. So, English you know, law? Yeah. So, you're looking at a future lawyer? Yes, yes, yes. What did you got her? Anything special? Um, an iPad. An iPad? Yes. <laughs> well, it's a technological <laughs> error, so. You know, mm -hmm. these gadgets are definitely important. What about Fab Kids? How is Fab Kids doing, man? Uh, Fab, Kids is Fab Kids is great. We just, uh, we moved to a new location, which okay. is at Giflon Mall, because, you know, Giflon Mall is, is, is the place in. to, Big it's popping and it's the place to Big go shopping and all of that. So I decided to, you know, make the grand move over there to Giflon Mall. So I'm always working on Fab Kids. I'm always, always working on Fab Kids. Fab Kids is my baby, actually. So sell Fab Kids to, <laughs> to the to the world. Let the people know something about Fab Kids. The best kids story in Guyana. The best kids story. The number one kids story. The number one kids story in Guyana. Let's let's cheers to that. <laughs> and you know, whilst you answering the question, you could have your glass here on and you can drink. You know, we don't want nobody dying from thirst. If you don't drink, I wouldn't. you're gonna die from thirst. You know, over the I'm just studying, I know I know we have to take a shot of all of these rum you know, you know, so I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, you know have a sense past, of balance. You know, we did mention that, you know, you, you you're not really Focusing on, I mean, it is your, your baby. Fab Kids is Melly Mel, of course, but over the past few months, you haven't really been doing much way by promoting Fab Kids are mm -hmm. concerned. You, you're much more, what, 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 are, what are the words? You're much more in tune to issues, social, social issues, issues that's happening. You know, where did that passion came from? Whereby you said, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice my own, my, my, my own business to basically pay close attention to these issues that's affecting young women all over the country. Well, I wouldn't say sacrificing my own business, but I not, would, not really I would say, I mean, but, but kind of like the, make it like... The attention a, that you the would have given to um, Fab Kids when we did the first interview. When we did, it's not yeah, there It's now. not there I now. understand. Um, yeah. I guess over the last two years, um, I've grown a lot yeah. and I've always been outspoken. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that, I don't know, I was just... So over the last two years or so, I was just so very outspoken when it comes to social so, issues mm -hmm. and personal issues mm -hmm. on, on social media. Like I say things that others are afraid to say. Like Definitely. I just say it because, you know, that's life. 
And so I think people like that. They like the honesty. They like the fact that I probably just, I basically make everything I don't, I don't want I don't mean to cut you, but, you know, I noticed the red shoes when you first came. <laughs> And now I'm looking at you and I'm noticing the red and lipstick. lipstick. Yes, it complements yes. everything. <laughs> so two to you, so you can continue. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was saying, um, what was I saying, Jamal? <laughs> you was, uh, you I was, was talking, talking about, about yeah, yeah. over the past two years. Over the past two years, you, yeah. I've just been, I've always been, out, I've always been outspoken on, so, on social media, but I just wasn't so active on Facebook. Mm. But I've become very, very active over the last two years or so when it comes to social issue, whether it's politics, whether it's a personal mm -hmm. issue, I've just been very, very, very outspoken. And I think people, well, most people, most people yeah. like me for that, because there are some, there are people that just think that, oh, I'm way too outspoken and I kind of rub them the wrong way mm -hmm. or may have offended them in some, some way or the Definitely. other. But most people, I think they like that um, I'm real, mm -hmm. as they say, I'm a realist. Um, I try to be as honest as possible with, well, I am honest as possible with my, my post and my rants and all of those things, so. How do you feel about what's going on right now, this whole ambience of intoxication? I like it, I must like say it. congrats. <laughs> um, I mean, from the time when we shoot, I mean, when we shoot the first and I was doing everything. you were doing everything, everything, you were running back to the camera, yeah. I see we have lights and, you know, yeah. and the background and yeah, everything, yeah. so it's good congrats. Production, good production, It's yeah. good, and I, I love the fact that you continue to promote local, all of our local, local drinks. I don't know who's watching from Banks, the Irish, or Hanson McCall, Didi, or whatever. But you guys should come on board and sponsor. Yeah, definitely. I, you, you, I like, the, I you like it. it. You heard it from Melly Mel. You so. heard it from Melly Mel. So it's no, it's no secret that you would have gained a large following base and huge popularity from a beat that you and Lola mm -hmm. had a few months ago. You yeah. know, and <laughs> let, 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 me, let me tell you what's my take from that right, beat. What's look. your so, take? And I'll tell you what's mine. I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the beef, <laughs> looking at the beef, and then, you know, I said to myself, you know, this is not good for two sisters to be fighting, two talented sisters that I know personally and stuff. So I was actually trying to reach out to you, but I didn't get on to you to basically squash that in a makeable way. But that didn't happen. And then two mornings after, I'm and seeing Lola and Melly Mel doing a light together. So I'm thinking two things. It kind of worked. I'm, I'm thinking, when was I this planned? Because the live and then, the interview, if it was planned, you know, it was a strategic it. move. So, yes, I will. <laughs> so uh, was it a plan B? Let me just get this out there. Regardless of the rumors you might have heard, uh, or you I know, also don't have, listen to the crazy uh, people. It wasn't a plan B. Person. It wasn't. <laughs> for the persons that have been following me for the last two years or so, and the person mm -hmm. that have been following Lola for the past two years or three years, because I think when we when we started this beef, she had just came back into the country, so she was now. So getting on to social media and now yeah. started doing makeup and stuff like that. And myself, I had just started gaining followers for all my jokes and mm -hmm. unspoken, unspoken and being outspoken things mm -hmm. and all these thoughts and these things that I just sit on randomly. Mm -hmm. And I honestly just randomly sit on like I would literally go to the toilet and something would pop in my head <laughs> yeah. and I would go to social so media and it this. just so happened and it it's funny. Yeah. And before you know, people will share it like two or three hundred times. times yeah. And I guess like the followings are starting, you know, building from there. And we are both relatively new to this whole social media thing and trying to build, you know, a brand and the followers. And for those who have been follow who used to follow the beef, I can't say because it, yeah. it's no more. But for those who used to follow our beef back and forth, they would know it started since she started doing makeup when okay. she first came back to Ghana. And she started doing makeup. Um, she posted a picture because, of course, she now started doing makeup and she now teaching class and stuff. So she posted her students' work, okay. and, <laughs> and she was like, "Who do y'all think, A or B?" So uh, me, of course, being, being outspoken, yeah. None, I, you said I that. went under the I went under the comment. I was like, uh, "It's mm. a no for me." <laughs> so, right? What's his name? The guy from England. Um, <laughs> that this be on the X Factor. The most controversial one. He just always gave everybody no. Simon. Simon, yeah. Oh, it was, it's so enough for me. <laughs> so I went, I went on, I went on the post, and I was like, "It's, it's a, a no for, for me." me. Pop. <laughs> she being, of course, you know, Lola. She is hot. She is, you ego. know, very short tempered, yeah. and ego and stuff like that. She went on the back. Did she come on the back? Like, 
And she was like, oh, well, if it's a no for you, with a, you know, with a F, you do it under my post. Yeah. I was like, oh, really? So I'm typing there to reply to her, because we, we, we added back and forth yeah. under, the, under the post. And she blocks she me. She blocks you. <laughs> so knowing that, me knowing that, you know, mm -hmm. I have a little followers and them thing, I went, sent a friend to scream, grab the thing, and I posted it on, on my wall. Thing, yeah. And I was like, you can't be asking for the public opinion mm -hmm. and then can't take cons constructive criticism because yeah. I am going to say exactly how I feel. And it was like that. And she was like, oh, you're going to say exactly how you feel I live in soon. So come, let me, f you know, oh. and it went from there. And I think the beef just went on and on and on from there. I would provoke her. I, I, I'm not going to say I was a pie. <laughs> I used to provoke her. Like, I would, I would, you know, criticize her work. Mm -hmm. I would criticize her attitude. And I would, you know, I would try to, like, you know, belittle her in any way that I could on social media. Not knowing the in individual or not okay. knowing, you know, where she Poor came son, from yeah. and, and stuff like that. And if there's anything I've learned from that whole beef and everything is that you honestly don't know people and you honestly don't know how hard they work to get to where they are. are. So, so what basically uh, squashed that beef? What was the reason behind you guys squashed well, that Well, of course, you know, it was it was too much. It was I. It was me going to her doctor's page where she, where, she, where she had her surgery and was like, oh, it wasn't the waist trainer that was giving her the shape. It's the surgery. <laughs> and, you know, I was just, tr like I said. You, you did it was investigation. Just me, yeah. yeah. It was just me. And back then, I was known, back then on social media, I've already built a, a following knowing, oh, this girl is savage with her yeah, clap savage, backs. Yeah, savage, yeah. Don't mess with me. Yeah, this girl is savage with her clap backs. So, yeah. so I went all out. I went and dig in Dr. Moro Page and, and all these things. And people were sending you stuff also. And people were sending me yeah. stuff. Sadly, some of it were her friends. Fueling. Um, yeah. People were sending Indeed. me stuff because they were fueling the beef. I mean, mm -hmm. every day they tune in to see yeah. what gonna happen today. We're gonna yeah. say what Melly Mel gonna say. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know, maybe that was probably one of like the, I don't know, I, I, I can't, I can say that we honestly like started this whole social media beef the thing. Beef thing, yeah, yeah. Because we went, we went back and forth for a very, very long time. And we just decided after she went and did the whole live, and she just had enough of me. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, she just had enough of me. So when I went and I did the Dr. Moro back and forth <laughs> page, and I post, and I put his contact number, no, 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 and no, all no, these I things. I actually saw that, I'm like, right? I just, I just, and she just stripped. Mm -hmm. And she just went on a live and decided she gonna cost me my whole generation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but no, and I remember sitting at my friend's business, where the Fab Kids was at Ashman parking lot at that. And I remember sitting there watching this live, and all I'm thinking about what's next, what I'm gonna do next, because I'm like, this beef just went to a whole new level, mm -hmm. another level. What's next? So, and I start, I there and I on my phone and I start mm -hmm. plan, you know. And it just just so happened that you know, I had some information that I knew from a year <laughs> before. Cause, <laughs> If you know Melly Mel, you know Melly Mel always she got, got some stuff. kind she of got some stuff. information. Yeah, yeah. She always got a backup plan, always and backup it just plan. went from there. And it, it honestly, you know, it was uncalled for. It was uncalled for. It was uncalled so for. But you, you, my pride was hurt. Okay. I was hurting. I was embarrassed, of okay. course. You went on social media and tell the whole world that I was HIV positive, and I was like, which was not, which was not true, true. of course. Had me digging in and <laughs> email for, for results, my results, results to, to post on social media because you know, Guyanese, you know, yeah. from the time you just say mm -hmm. something, they just run. And yeah. then what made me feel? I remember my cousin messaging me, tell me, hey, I sit down in the barber shop and I hear the barber, yeah, I hear the one Melly. Melly get in. I was like, <laughs> what? Even fast, I just went into my phone and cause, look for the because you know you do you know, know when you do HIV tests when you're in when you're in New York, you usually send, send the, the, the email, yeah. they send the results via email. Yeah. So there I was looking for the looking thing. for it. I was like, no, anyway, the whole the police got involved. Um, her boyfriend at the time got involved. He just happened to be. <laughs> at the wrong place at, at the, the wrong, wrong time, time yeah. got caught up in a situation. He just there minding your own business, minding his own business, and got caught got up, up yeah. in our drama. Yeah. So I like, you know what? Let me meet. I was like, fine, I'm gonna meet you, but I'll meet you alone. I want us to meet alone. I don't want you to bring any friend. Yeah. I won't bring anybody. Let's meet let me just trash it out. Let me you just have a conversation. And it went from there. I met her. Um, I walk into new, we, we met at New Driving, and of course, we, I'm walking into New Driving. She, she went up first, and she went into the car. Mm -hmm. By then, the whole beef is all over social media. Say, buddy, so when, when they, like, is it so, gonna be a fight? <laughs> so when I walk into New Driving, so even to the waiter, it's like, hmm? and I went over to her chair, and everybody's like, you mm -hmm. see everybody in the restaurant, 
peeping to see like you know what it was, was going gonna, on yeah, or yeah. you know you know but we sat there and when i got there the first thing she said to me she was like oh you're so much prettier in, in person. person oh that's that's dope and i was like so are you uh -huh. and we just hugged and we sat there we had a conversation we cried because you know she told me like she was like man I felt hurt because you know she and she started and and she started explaining you know her story mm -hmm. how she started her business how she mm -hmm. came back with her with her money and she, she decided to open the business and you know start this thing she was like she didn't know that it was gonna take off and she was gonna become so popular and you know she don't understand why she's getting all the hate and she just feels as though i was always attacking her and i was always attacking her okay. because i was she blocked me and okay. i felt as though you know I could carry on this social media, be back and forth, which, like I said, was you know, it makes no, it made no sense at all. So, so what, that's what, how what, we just what, 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 what have you taken from this whole situation with you and Lola? What are some of the, 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 the like the, I said, like like I like I mentioned it before. I said like you ne like I mentioned before we started. I said like you never know like somebody struggle, somebody struggle. And you shouldn't judge, and you shouldn't come. judge. And I, I say this all the time. Be nice to people because you don't know what they're going mm -hmm. through. They don't always say it or they won't always say it. Definitely. But just try to be nice, try to be kind because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know the struggles. Yeah, you, you know, I must applaud you guys and, you know, starting out that whole situation in a mature way. So definitely mm -hmm. cheers to that. And, um, <laughs> you know, uh, a few a few weeks ago, I um, actually saw a post about some nude photos. And, you know, oh, that the, first, was, oh, yeah. the first thing that came to my mind you know, when I saw that, is that um, I'm going to ask Melly Mel, where can I go to find these nude photos? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually just one nude photo. And it's, uh, and it's a very bad nude photo. Like my friend said to me, like Samantha said, she was like, Melly Mel. She was like, because she's seen me naked. All, she, see, she sees me naked all the time. And we're going out and she's like, but. You know you don't look like that. I'm like, yeah, but it looks so... Anyway, It was in the earlys. No, it was... No, it was a... It was a bad picture, angle. But it was how I took the okay, picture. Okay. Like, I didn't care. It, it made it look as though one of my breasts was longer than one. And you know, Guyanese, you can't tell them, oh, no. no, no one no, of your yeah. breasts isn't longer than the other mm -hmm. because of how the picture was taken or whatever. Anyway, I... <laughs> Let's take another shot and then we'll get back into that. Which sure. one would you um, like to try? What is next? What is Have next? you had the, the Moscato wine? Um, I've had it before, but I'm going to... You want to try it again? Yeah. I did, so. This is actually one of my favorites. You know, I'm a big fan of Moscato. Okay. Moscato wine. This is a dope product from Guyana. So what are we toasting to? We are toasting to being mature and squashing the beef with Lola, because, <laughs> you know, right. it takes a mature person to put on... Did Lola had all this to drink? Yeah, Lola, had everybody... Every, have, uh, every, some every... Everybody that comes on, she you probably know. high home. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers to that. So this is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's it's, it's dope. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Yana. I, I recently saw you started this uh, entire foundation. You're not alone. Tell us a little bit about uh, the objectives behind Yana. Um, and what it, this, well, it, Yana started so nice. well, like you know, again, Yana started from a Facebook post. That from I made. Facebook, yeah, definitely. Of course, I asked. Um, I asked the question about you know who have ever been molested, have you ever been molested or raped, and why didn't you say, why didn't you tell somebody, why didn't you say something to somebody, and surprisingly, I didn't think that. Excuse me, I didn't think that. You know, people would have actually like people would have actually because you know rape and being molested are something that you know as a stigma is against a it. Even if you're a victim, <laughs> even if you're a victim, you know yeah. something that people don't. It be outspoken. Mm -hmm. They don't like to talk about. They like to keep it hush hush. Your your family and your mom mm -hmm. always tell you, don't tell this. Don't make mm -hmm. sure it stay in the house and it don't come out of the mm -hmm. house and stuff like that. So I posted the question. Me being controversial and outspoken, and I wanted to know. And it started in the comments. And what started in the comments as people say, oh yes, I didn't say anything because it was so so so. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that people were actually brave enough. Yeah, the just, response was crazy. The response yeah, was crazy. Honestly, so the when the post was like 300 or something, come like, hmm. Mm. And then I had persons, and that was just 300 comments on the, 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 the post, post yeah. that one status. But then I had people coming into my the inbox, inbox yeah. that didn't want to write their story mm -hmm. on the post and started sharing their story with me via Messenger. Mm -hmm. So I was like, so when the first person came and she stared her, so I'm like, hey, would it be okay for me to share your story? So what I'll do is that I'll leave you anonymous. I'll just cut out the name, I'll crop the picture and everything, but I just want to share your story. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, sure. 
you can share my story. And I shared. Then the second person, when I shared the first story, and then the first story had like 100 shares. And I'm mm-hmm. figuring that people started, obviously, if they're sharing and they're sharing and they're sharing, people they start reading. reading yeah. And I start getting all these, you know, when you're somebody and not friends on Facebook, you have all these unread. I start mm-hmm. seeing like 99 unread Ooh, messages wow. and stuff like that. So people started coming to my inbox with their stories. And I spend the entire day, the entire night, cropping wow. stories and sharing. And when I was like at 70 something, I, when I was like at, uh, no, I took my first, I took the first break when I was like 20 something because I've been, re- I'm reading all day mm-hmm. and I'm not just reading stories, but I'm talking to these individuals and sharing my story as well as a form of comfort, just, um, you know, just to comfort them and let them know that, you know, I know what you're going through and that, you know, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. And that is where the whole, you're not alone yeah, and it's beautiful. came from, Trust me, right? Beautiful. Yes, that's Dope where the logo, whole, everything. exactly, yeah. you're not alone. That's where the whole, you're not alone came from. So I started sharing my story mm-hmm. and we started talking back and forth and stuff like that. And so I had to take a break. So after I posted the first 25 or so story, I took a break. The next day I posted another 25 and this went on for like about a week or so as the stories came in. But they are like a hundred and something story that I didn't, didn't post, post because the persons who sent me the story are like people I know, people that are on my page, they're like, don't post the story because it will be very, very familiar to a lot of people. You know, they will, you know, figure out who it is. I've noticed that um, you post a lot of stories that women send you and, you know, I got a major problem when it comes to issues is affecting Guyanese as a whole. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing I've uh, realized is that issues is affecting both male and female in Guyana. Mm -hmm. People don't look at it from a gender neutral point Point of view. view. Mm -hmm. Is Yana a gender neutral organization whereby if a man send you something that, you know, is showcasing a bad side from of course, the female of gender, course would you post that? Of course that? it is. Um, <laughs> the objective, the um, objective of Yana is to mobilize resources yeah. for um, for individuals, whether male or female, or female, that have been affected by have been affected have been affected by Victim sexual by violence. violence. Okay. Um, just sexual violence alone? No, not just or sexual any violence. Kind of any kind of violence, violence okay. whether it's domestic, domestic violence, okay. sexual okay. violence. Because I have been dealing with a lot, not just not just sexual violence. I've been dealing with persons that are, well, I don't know if you saw the last phase, but I do a lot when it comes to domestic violence as well, because I've been there as well. Okay. So all of that falls under IANA. Mm-hmm. So it's not just dealing with victims of rape or molestation and stuff. We do with domestic violence, we deal with, um, of course, men. I, I, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you read, read all the stories, but actually like about mm, 20 of the stories that I've read were male. It was male? Yeah. Okay. And I was surprised, like everybody, when I started posting this or anybody, everybody was like, when are we going to get a male, when are we going to see like a male, a male victim? A male victim. And then I think the first male victim was like 30 something before I got a male to actually come for it. And then after that, I had quite a few start okay. coming in. You know, it's, um, it's no secret that in Guyana, there's no consistency when it comes to highlighting social issues in Guyana. Mm-hmm. Uh, people tend to wait till something happens, like if somebody were to commit suicide tomorrow, then you would see 10,000 suicidal prevention Prevention posts. Post. And then, if but, domestic, you know, how is Yana basically separating himself from that stigma when it comes to other NGOs? Well, um... I plan to be, I'm always consistent on my Facebook, as you know. I'm very active, very, very, I'm very, when it comes to my posts and stuff like that on Facebook, and I'm very consistent with the work I do. I do it every day. If there's an opportunity for me to share a story, I share a story, providing that the individual allows me to. Because if you decide that you don't want me to share your story, or you want to remain anonymous, I wouldn't. Okay. So what, what it's not my place to, it's what, your story to tell, it's not my place to tell it without, without, it's not my place to tell it without your permission. Okay, so, so. Mm-hmm. Are there any follow-ups after these stories? After you would of have course. posted these stories, what happens? Of course. What of happens course. after a victim, after a young lady or a young man would have told Melly Mel that she's a victim of domestic violence? What happens? What is the next? But for step? one, they'll tell you that um, I keep checking in with them all the time. Okay. That's because they always there's always you know somebody to talk to and thing. Mm-hmm. And what I realize is that even if they message me with one issue, whether it's domestic violence or you know, being raped or sexually molested at, you know, a young age or stuff. 
um, it kind of leads to other issues, issues yeah. in the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the home, mm -hmm. at the job and stuff like that. And these are things that they usually want somebody to talk to about. So sometimes I would have them jumping in my inbox for, you know, different reasons. And we would reason, we would have a conversation and, and, and you know, you know me, I'm always frank and I'm always straight up. I'm like, here, this is what, this is what we're going to do, this is what you should do. Um, I don't know if I can help you with this, but let me say I might know somebody that can help you. Let me put you on to somebody that can help you. And, you know, that's how the relationship goes. But there's always a follow-up. Um, in terms of the yarn of victims, all of the, the you know, you're not alone victims, I am working, like I said, on Yana, on getting the foundation started. Um, I am working on, I have a few counselors that are coming in on the 19th of December from abroad. Some are coming from Jamaica and all these different country. And I'm planning on having them do a workshop the with workshop, these victims yeah. and stuff. I already mentioned it to them. Most of them have agreed to it. So there's always a follow-up, but just that I don't have the time to you know, post all the time. But, but I know people want to know, we, oh, what happened to these victims, yeah, but, you know. How many victims do you have living with you, by the way? Let me, <laughs> let me, let me let's, let's Right now, I don't have any. You don't have any? No, because okay. the ones that I have living with me, thank God, um, I was able to get them jobs. Okay. I was able, with the help, of course, of my social media okay. followers, persons on social so, media. Um, like I said, just so happened that Actually, I, I was able to, fi to, to find jobs for more than three of them. More than but three for the three that I had living with me, um, I got them jobs, um, place to stay, um, whatever it is they needed at the mm -hmm. moment, I provided. Of course, you know, finance is always an issue because you're doing these things from your own personal savings. Um, so, so, but, there, so there's no, no, like, no, no organization on board when it comes to helping to not as not. not as yet okay, so the, only, the only the only if the only would... help i get i have like i've had like a few facebook person that reached out to me and may have sent like you know fifty dollars or twenty dollars to okay. help out with whatever and for that i'm thankful so they, they let, did, let and, the you viewers know, know i remember i had i remember i had one girl and i don't ever forget her mercedes if you're watching she actually actually but when she heard that i had like you know, three girls living with me, and that I have to take care of. She bought she they she herself and her husband operates a butcher shop, and she bought me so many beefs and chicken and meat. Whoa. And it, I mean, I was so thankful. So, that she uh, just wanted to help. So she just let, wanted to help. let the viewers know and where they can find you if they want to help. Because I'm well, sure of course, a lot of people they can find me via social media. Okay. Of course, Mel, Mel, everybody knows Mel. Mel. Yes, I reply to each and every single one of my messages. Even if you're just saying hi or you're just waving, I reply to it. But if, you, if, if it's not a, a situation where you don't want help or anything, you just want to have a conversation. Sometimes I don't reply to the message if I see a guy just trying to holler at me or whatever. Of course gonna take I don't reply. But if, it's, <laughs> but if it's serious, I I'm always on social media. I check my messages. I reply personally to all my messages. If, if 100 messages in there, I ensure that I go through 100 messages, even if I take, you know, time to do so that's why it's when some people message me sometimes i take a day or two before i could even reply because it's so much because it's so much and i go to my message all the time but i read my messages i will see your message i will see your story i will see you wanting to help or you just you know talk me in a post Melly man i'm trying to get you i'll just jump in your inbox there are hundreds of millions of dollars that's allocated each year to certain government organization to do what you're actually doing you know what, Jamal? I reached out to... I like what you to, said. I say, say, say it again. You know what, Jamal? Uh, I, love you. <laughs> I reached out. I'm going to tell you this. Um, I reached out to three persons okay. that I know personally that are in this current administration. Okay. I have them on WhatsApp. We chat every now and again back and forth. So when I started doing the stories, I need a job for like about... I was asking them, like, you know, is there any, you know, way you can, you know, kind of see... For mm -hmm. a job for somebody, because you, you you know if you can, is there any opening, any ministry opening? Um, you know, let me send you their their CV. So you spoke to ministers actually, or permanent secretary, because you just I said spoke ministry. To minister, I spoke to a minister. I spoke to a minister. A minister within the ministry. I okay. spoke to another person that I don't want to call right, but okay. I have spoken to people <laughs> that I know personally, and I never got a response it as it relates to helping me get these individual well, jobs and i've never messaged them back and i've never asked them again for help you're gonna get a I response go on, next year i go i go on my page and i ask my followers for help mm -hmm. and my followers always come through 
Thank you. Tell us a little bit about Eminem and um, Finment. How did Eminem came about? Uh, we people are always sending me their flyers to post mm -hmm. on my social page. Of you, of course, you know you have a you have a followers. Oh, we want this. Yeah, and I and I'm, and I'm guessing social media is the place now to advertise practically anything. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. are not watching a TV, TV. anymore. Mm -hmm. they, everybody is on social, social media. media YouTube, You're, so. They're more likely to see it on social media than on the on television. television yeah. So people used to always send me their flyers to post and then a friend inboxed me about doing a party at one time. And I was like, man, I don't know if entertainment is my thing. I don't know if doing parties. <laughs> I don't know if I have the time, mm -hmm. you know, to go out there getting sponsors and, you know, asking like you know i'm always begging on facebook already for mm -hmm. for homeless kids and people i don't know if i you know i want to do so i kind of like that i kind of let it just die away for a bit and then a few months ago i said you know what i love karaoke i'm always at karaoke and i'm like you know what i'm going to do a karaoke competition i am going to do a karaoke competition and i just did the flyers with eminem entertainment and i know i post that i'm you know I want to do a karaoke competition, and a, and a friend of mine, of course, from Anson McCall, Edson, um, he was like, you know what, we're going to come on board. Um, Sky Vodka is going to come on board, and, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to give you the 100000 to give the person. Whoa. Because my initial thing was to ask, of course, my followers, followers again, yeah. so they're like, everybody gave me, I get, mm -hmm. six, I guess, 70,000 followers. Ten of you gave me a thousand, like you know, hundred of you gave me a, 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 a thousand, thousand each, thousand and I can and I can guarantee you, like you a hundred, yeah, there, yeah, or yeah. some would even give me five or ten. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna raise that hundred thousand, like you know, mm -hmm. and I, just give me a hundred thousand. I'm gonna do a karaoke competition, mm -hmm. and you know, he's like, you know, what, we're gonna come on board. I'm gonna give you the hundred thousand for karaoke competition. We're gonna sponsor the, the you know, the set, the the karaoke guy, mm -hmm. the karaoke machine, and you know, we can just show it. So and of course, HQ Bar came Definitely. on board. And I went to HQ bar and we sit down there and we work and we said we're going to do a karaoke competition. And it was amazing. Before we go, you want to let the viewers know where they can <laughs> find you. You know, if you got a number, your WhatsApp, your email. Because, um, you know, it's not just about Eminem Entertainment, you know. Mm -hmm. Yana is something that people need to support. Need to know. It's um, a beautiful I have thing. I have uh, the, the foundation email address. Okay. Which is, Melly, which is Melly Mel Foundation. Um, at gmail.com. Okay. You can email me via there. You can also email me via Melissa, which is M E L I S S A, 138202 at gmail.com. Okay. And you can contact me via Facebook. I do not give out my cell number because okay. I only have one number at the moment okay. and it's my personal number. And I've, I've been using it so far for everything, but um, I plan on getting a local number. That I'm gonna just use strictly for business, so I'll probably have it by next week or so. I'll post to my page, so if anybody wanna contact me for whatever reason, they could contact me via that number. Okay, all right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Javon. Again. What about up, it's your boy Jay Adams, aka the Intoxicator. And if you like the video just now, saw and wanna see more of it, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can be up to date with what's happening here on this channel, okay? And if you want to see some uncut behind the scenes footage of what's happening here on Intoxicated the Paper Chat Show, make sure to click the Patreon link below. Remember to support the thing, to be up to date with the thing. I'm out.